Have you ever used a trading indicator to time your trades, but it just didn't work out at all? Well, we have an options trading strategy that can solve that problem for you in many cases. I'm Seth Freuberg, the head trader of SMB Capital's options trading desk here in Manhattan, and the traders on our desk know how to use option strategies to substantially improve the odds of your making money on a trade where you're timing your entries and exits based on indicators. In this video, we'll talk about how to use the RSI index and combine that with an option spread strategy to make it much more likely you'll make money on the trade. So if that sounds interesting, then stick around. I think you're going to learn something actionable in this video to help you to improve your game as a trader. Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg, and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan, and we provide capital for options and equity traders from all over the world, trading both remotely and in our offices here in New York City. I'd like to suggest that you click on our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free trading videos that we produce for traders and investors all over the world. They're really very valuable. Okay, so. Many of you are experienced traders and have probably heard of the RSI indicator. It's a momentum indicator that measures whether an asset's price is, at least temporarily, too high to be sustainable, which is known as an overbought condition. Or conversely, the indicator may signal that a stock's price has been driven down to the point that there are buyers readily willing to scoop the shares up at that price in what is known as an oversold condition. RSI readings around 70 or higher are generally considered to be overbought conditions, and RSI readings around 30 or lower are generally considered to be oversold conditions. So, for example, let's take a look at a chart of DIA, also known as the Diamonds, which is an ETF that mirrors the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And as you can see, the index has, generally speaking, rallied pretty steadily over the last 12 months, with, of course, some occasional pullbacks. So now let's go back to late June of last year. And as you can see, the DIA was trading around 250 in late June. And so if you move over to August 10th, you'll see that the RSI index for DIA had risen to just about exactly 70, indicating to RSI traders that DIA stock was overbought at its current price of 278 and a bearish play was in order. So a swing trader might at that point have shorted DIA stock, but there's another way to play this using options and in the process give yourself a large margin of error should the index not perfectly predict the peak of the DIA rally in August. So what an options trader might have done at this point is to have entered into a bearish options trade known as a call credit spread. Now before we get into why a call credit spread is used by options traders as a bearish strategy, I wanted to let you know that beyond what we're teaching you in this video, there are a large number of sound, viable, long-term techniques for trading options for income. And in that regard, we're currently running a two-hour free intensive workshop where we'll be teaching you three of those strategies that real professional options traders use. In that webinar, we'll be teaching you a really simple but incredibly effective strategy that some of the greatest investors in the world use all the time plus an option strategy that has a statistical 80% probability of profit month in and month out, plus an option strategy that you can employ with a stock that you like where you'll make your target profit, whether the stock goes up, goes nowhere, or even goes down a small percentage. So if you'd like to learn these strategies, then just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can register for the workshop at optionsclass.com. It's not often that retail traders can be taught strategies employed by actual Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now and don't miss it. Okay, so a call credit spread is where we combine a short call option with a long call option in a certain formation that creates positive cash flow when you first enter the trade. Now, I realize that many of you probably know something about how stock options work, but just for a quick review, for those of you 
who don't, and this is going to be fast, just hang in there, what's known as a call option on a stock entitles the buyer of that option to purchase 100 shares of that stock at a certain price called the strike price of that option, regardless of what price the stock is actually trading at at any time before that option expires. What's called a put option, on the other hand, entitles the buyer of that put to sell 100 shares of a stock he owns at the strike price of that put, again, regardless of what price the stock is trading at, at any time before that option expires. The buyer of the option pays what's called a premium to the seller of the option because the seller of that option is taking the risk that the stock will go past the strike price of the option, in which case the buyer can exercise his option. So in the case of a call, even if the stock has gone way above the strike price of the call, the call buyer can exercise his right to buy 100 shares at that strike price. In other words, he's entitled to buy the shares way below market. He could flip them the next minute and make a huge profit on those shares in that case. Or conversely, as to the put option, even if the market goes way below the strike price of that put option, the buyer of the put has the right to sell his shares of that stock at the strike price of the put option that he's bought, even if the stock price has gone way below the strike price of the put, which effectively puts a floor on how much he can lose owning that stock. Now, on the other hand, at expiration, if you've sold a call and the market closes below the strike price of the call, then unless the call was previously exercised, the call expires worthless and the call seller just pockets the premium. Similarly, if you've sold a put and the market closes above the strike price of that put, then unless the put was previously exercised, it expires worthless and the call seller just pockets the premium. Now, with that as background, let's take a look at that August 10th date we pointed out from last year where we mentioned that the RSI had been up around 70 for the first time in a while, indicating an overbought bearish condition according to the way this indicator is usually interpreted. So on that day, and incidentally, most brokers uh, will do this calculation for you through the use of tools on their broker platforms. On that day, you calculate what an upward one standard deviation statistical move on the DIA would be over about a two week period. And in this case, it came out to the 285 area. In other words, statistically, there's only about a 32% chance that the DIA will be at 285 in two weeks given where it is trading today at 278. So what an informed options trader might do is to sell 50 of those 285 calls for 91 cents and simultaneously buy 50 of those 90 calls for 34 cents for protection on an options chain that is as close as possible to the, that two week time frame, which is, happens to be in this case, the options chain expiring on August 21st, 12 days later. So what we have done here is to put on a bearish trade known in options trading circles as a call credit spread. Now let's examine what has happened here from a cash flow standpoint. And as you can see, we sold 50 of those 285 calls at 91 cents. But remember, each of those options represent 100 shares of stock. So you multiply that by 100 and we bought 50 of them. So the total received from selling those 50 calls was $4,550. And likewise, we paid out 34 cents a share for those 290 calls that we bought for protection. And as you can see from the calculations, those represented a cost of $1,700, with the net effect being that we received $2,850 into our account immediately for entering into this trade, which your broker, incidentally, will require capital of at least $22,150 for you to enter this trade, which is also the worst case scenario on the trade. Now, let's move forward to the day that these options expire. And as you can see, the DIA closed at around 279 that day, later in August. So what that means in terms of our call credit spread trade is, and this is the good news, even though the DIA had actually risen slightly since we first put this trade on 12 days earlier, both of the options, the short calls at 285 and the long calls at 290, both expired worthless. Why? Well, no one's going to exercise his right to buy DIA shares at 285 when they're trading at 279 in the open market. And obviously, the same is true for the 290 calls that we own. And so they both lost all of their value. And so we're just left with the 
original $2,850 that we originally received for selling that credit spread for a profit of over 12% in 12 days. And what's interesting about this trade is that if instead of moving up one standard deviation uh, away above the market and selling a call credit spread, if instead we sold DIA shares on the day the RSI indicator uh, had turned bearish, we would have actually lost money on the stock trade because we would have sold the shares at 278, yet 12 days later they were trading at 279. And so our short position would have been in the red while we had a full win on our options position. We tracked the same trade over the last 12 months and the first time in the last 12 months the RSI got into the oversold 30 area was on October 28th of last year. And on that day, the DIA was trading at 266. And so for the first time over the last 12 months, the RSI indicated that the diamonds were actually oversold. And so on that day, a knowledgeable options trader would move down one standard deviation about two weeks out, which would be at around 245. So he'd go to an options chain that expires as close to two weeks as possible, which turned out in this case to be the one expiring 17 days later on November 13th. And he'd sell, this time, 50 of those 245 puts for 229, and for protection, he'd buy 50 of those 240 puts for $1.66. And so, just like before, as you can see from the calculations, we collected $11,450 from selling those 245 puts, but we also paid out $8,300 from buying the 240 puts, resulting in a net cash inflow of $3,150, this time with our broker requiring, on this occasion, $21,850 to make the trade. And so if we move forward again to the day of expiration, we can see that the DIA bounced to 295 with this time the RSI indicator being very accurate. And so again, if we analyze what happened, you'll see the reason that we call this put credit spread trade a bullish trade, because on that day, both the 245 puts and the 240 puts both expired worthless. Because again, who's gonna exercise their right to sell their shares of DIA at 245 when the stock is trading 50 points higher at 295? So obviously that right has no value and the options just die and expire worthless, leaving us with the full $3,150 in trading profits, which in this case generated a 14.4% return in 12 days. And so we methodically went through every point since last year that the DIA's RSI went either bullish with a put credit spread or bearish with a call credit spread where we didn't otherwise already have a trade working, and that actually took place 10 times over that one year period, and the results were pretty surprisingly great because, as you can see, there were no losses at all, each trade was a full win, and the total profit was over $24,000, which constituted a return of over 100% on the capital deployed in that year. And so the really important lesson from this video is that if you just outright use an indicator like RSI, you'll sometimes get poor results buying or shorting the stock because these indicators aren't perfect. They're just sort of generally reliable. Whereas by giving yourself some room to be wrong, which is exactly what you're doing, selling credit spreads out of the money like we did for these 10 trades, you can have a startlingly high win rate because as long as the indicator isn't way wrong, we are so far out of the money when we start the trade that a win is almost assured. And these kinds of ideas come almost as second nature to professional options traders because they've seen the success that can be brought about by learning how to trade option spreads versus just outright buying and selling shares of stock where your win rate will be lower in almost all cases. Just to remind you, if you're serious about your trading, you need to check out the free intensive options class that we're currently running where you'll learn three real world option strategies that our professional options traders use all the time. Just click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free workshop directly. It really is a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn 
directly from Wall Street traders. But that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now before you miss it. And please don't forget to click on the subscribe button right now so you won't miss all the free trading videos that we're constantly posting on our channel to help you to improve your game as an options trader.